Pedro from AMP Reacts. I'm here today with none other than Kai from Nightwish. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm very good, thank you. And it's a Mother's Day here in Finland, so uh, we are enjoying the mothers today. Same here, same here in Canada. It's Mother's Day, and uh, uh, the question that I have then is, did you get something for your wife? Yes, I did. Uh, <laughs> some some uh, white roses. Oh, very yeah. nice. I, 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 my wife doesn't know yet, but I ordered some flowers for delivery, so hopefully they arrive today. It would suck if they show up tomorrow, but uh, I'm hoping they show up today. Yeah, that would be a little bit pain in the ass. So, <laughs> <laughs> just in case, I have a backup plan. I have a plan B. Uh, I, I bought her some uh, a nice little mug with some teas and something like that, and some cards for for my son to give it to her as well. So, I, I think I don't think I'm going to get into trouble. You're going to be fine. <laughs> I want to start off by saying congratulations for officially joining uh, Nightwish. Um, how does it feel now to be a, a full member of the band? Uh, of course, uh, since like it's been five years now, a little bit over five years since I joined or I replaced Yuka. Uh, so, uh, of course, it's it's nice to get the recognition that I try to do a good job. As a as a replacement drummer, but now of course I'm a permanent drummer, so I'm I'm happy because because I love what we do and uh, I would never otherwise do it. Uh, what you know when when I was asked to be the drummer of the band, so so it's it's a privilege. Yes, you you came in to record the drums in the previous record, uh, record uh, Endless Forms, Most Beautiful. Uh, was, was that a, a difficult process for you to come in, adjust, record the drums for the album, uh, or, or you, you were familiar with what they were doing and, and it was an easier transition? Uh, of course, I've, I've been uh, a fan of the band since the early days. And uh, actually, Dark Passion Play and Imaginarum, I was involved as a drum tech for Yuka in the studio. So I was tuning the drums and I also played some uh, percussion uh, in uh, in Imaginarum, a little, little bit like tambourine and blah, 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 like the hand claps of uh, I want my tears back. I want my beers back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, you know, stuff like that. So I was uh, already familiar with the guys uh, for over 10 years. So when they called me, it was like the last minute call. So it was a pain in the ass to to come and try to save the day, so to speak, and in the last minute. So, of course, the previous record, Endless Forms, was more more like uh, trying to play a little bit more in a yucca style, mm -hmm. because of course most of people know this already, but uh, because we didn't know if yucca is coming back and when he is coming back. So he should be able to play those songs uh, as a as a main drummer. So I had to keep my my uh, personal kind of um, input in a way that I can still. I, I try to sound like Yuka, but of course, never, <laughs> but nobody can sound like Yuka because Yuka is Yuka, and, uh, and that's it. So uh, it's it's just I I try to make a good job. In, in the time frame we had and still make a reasonable uh, end result for for the previous record so so that was a challenge yes yeah so I, 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 I think i had a, uh, yeah i think i had two and a half days to learn all the songs then i recorded then I recorded them in two and a half days as well so it's it was a it was a challenge. <laughs> you you were like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible but uh, but still you managed to pull it off uh, yes, it. Uh, of course, I, I've done these kind of uh, uh, replacement jobs before, but not in this scale. So it was, uh, it was a challenge. And was he looking over your shoulder when you were recording to make sure you were doing what you were doing the best impersonation of Yuka as possible? Uh, I think Yuka joined in the last day of the drum recording, so I already had uh, most of the drums recorded in in the first two days. So. He joined in the last day, and uh, he gave the thumbs up for for the job done. So he really liked it, and uh, he was happy. 
But now with this album, you you had a different approach because now this album you're not replacing him. This album is your is your first record with the band. You're allowed to give a little bit more of your personal touch. You don't have to drum as him. You can drum as yourself. So uh, how do you approach the the drums recording for for this album? Uh, of course, when I got the demo from Thomas, uh, I instantly heard that. Of course, I, I can't really play the stuff I want to play, which came the ideas that came to my head that I, I can't really play the stuff uh, with my old setup. So I had to add five more drums to, to my drum set. Uh, but it's it's uh, it's a good cause because uh, I never want to drag, you know, stuff around the world what I don't use. So I wanted to also challenge myself. So when we went to the first rehearsals in, in Kite in the first of uh, first of July, when we started the band rehearsals with Thomas and, and Marco and, and Empu. So I kind of put that drum set I had in mind. I, I, I set it up for the first time in my life in the rehearsal space. So I never played it before. I never prepared anything. Because I, I kind of thought that if, if I try to make this uh, pre kind of ideas before the rehearsals and then what the other guys are thinking about how it should be, because we are still a, still like a collective. We, uh, you know, give ideas back and forth. Maybe this works, maybe that won't work. So it's still still a band. So. I'm not just a drummer, I'm part of the band, so uh, everybody's respecting each other and also respecting uh, each other's views. So when I put up that uh, new drum kit, I was actually also kind of excited that I had some ideas in my head, but to be able to play them like that, it's it's not that easy. So... so uh, so of course this this time I I still wanted to put a little bit more of myself in there, but also I still wanted to keep as a as a night wish. I didn't want to go too jazzy or or too progressive. Even there is progressive elements, but I, I tried to get uh, keep the the vibe still recognizable, so people can indif- identify it and you know understand what's what's kind of going on so yeah that's maybe the do you feel like this re- i felt this way and i really want to ha- have your opinion on this i felt that this record really it was really a a joint effort from all band members everybody contributed with something it, it didn't feel necessarily like thomas was dictating a, a norm and everybody was following it felt like it, it was a joint venture it's really an album that feels like it has a piece it has a little bit of a a piece of the heart of each single band member. Do you, do you look at the record and feel the same way? I, I have totally the same same feeling because it 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 was a band record in my opinion because the symphony orchestra was not there, so there was only like the the choirs and uh, and the violins and cellos and stuff like that and some contrabass, but but mostly it it's like a band oriented record, especially also with the vocals. Because we have three great vocalists that can actually make, uh, like what you saw in the Decades tour, that the three vocalists can pull off some stuff together that goes to the next level, so to speak. So, so Thomas really thought about this uh, when he was making the new songs, and I think, uh, like Marco and Troy, they have a amazing ear. To be able to pull off like harmonies and uh, and stuff like that, so they are really, really on top of their game in that stuff. So it was a joy to do this album, really, really joy. Where does this album rank for you in in, in the all time list of albums that you have been a part of? You've been a part of a, a lot of incredible records. So uh, where where does this one stack for you? Uh, I, I think it's one of my personal favorites because the way I had to play the drums, it's not just one style. I really had to kind of stretch my limits and 
like I'm a big fan of jazz. I'm a big fan of Latin music. I listen to classical stuff. Uh, I have like 2,500 CDs at home, which it's a huge collection of different genres of music, fusion jazz, you know, uh, different stuff, pop music. I love Toto. And I have to mention this <laughs> because, because uh, in, in the song Harvest, it's my tribute, actually, that uh, drum, drum part is uh, my tribute to Toto's 40-year-old uh, career because they stopped now uh, as a band. So, so that was my uh, uh, tribute. And if everybody knows about from Tambu Record, they know I will remember. So that's my uh, tribute to Toto, actually. It's not the same pattern, but it's everybody who knows that pattern they know that okay it sounds a bit like a, like a toto so That's stuff like that so i could also i made some tribute to different things throughout the record some rolling stones tribute and this like hidden uh, easter eggs throughout <laughs> uh, throughout the album uh, with my some of my uh, personal heroes oh that's really cool that, that adds a, a personal touch now, when you listen to the album back, it adds a personal touch for you. Yes, it, it totally is. And, uh, and like I said, I, I really spent a lot of time by myself because we usually rehearsed uh, in the band camp, like from 10 in the morning to four o'clock in the afternoon. And usually when everybody else went to warm up the sauna or, uh, you know, make some uh, uh, dinner or whatever, I, I stayed in the rehearsal space for two more hours to play my drums and perfect some of the parts I didn't really feel I was nailing in, in that day. So, But we only had only maybe 20 days to rehearse that album, so it was quite still a hectical uh, schedule to put everything together in, 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 in one month. What, what, what kind of challenges do you face as a drummer playing for Nightwish that perhaps you didn't face playing for other bands in the past? Uh, I think it's the variety of of different styles. Maybe that that's the maybe the biggest, especially on the new album, because there's uh, there's so many different things happening, mm -hmm. and also to find to try to find the right mood for the song, because it's not just like blast beat, blast beats or or uh, heavy metal drumming. It's there's so much more depth actually. What I had to try to you know, represent in this new album. So, uh, so in that way, it, like like you asked before, is it like how would I rank myself or how would I rank that album? So I would rank it pretty high. So uh, of course, it's a different like, uh, for instance, with uh, with the Sun uh, self-titled or with the Sun Time, which I also uh, had to practice quite much to be able to pull that stuff off, but it's a different way mm -hmm. so yeah different sound different approach i mean you, you can they're not even in the same uh town ballpark country it's co completely different yes it is yeah and and speaking of, of different uh tribal we have to talk about this song because the moment i heard that track when i was listening to the album i was like okay this this is the song where where they really going to make you uh, work out a sweat and, uh, and, and and get you uh, to put some extra hours of labor into this track. I love it. It had it had such a well, it had such a tribal feel to the sound of the drums. It reminded me of of roots from Sepultura, that more tribal aspect. So yeah. uh, can you give us a glimpse of, of how that song came about? How, how were you approached? And then how did you approach that song? Uh, like I said, uh, when I when I heard the demo from Thomas, uh, I knew that, okay, there were some cool ideas that Thomas wanted to do as far as percussion, but I didn't want to play as a percussion player in the song. So I wanted to make a drum part that I can play as, uh, as well live. So I, I created this uh, kind of drum part that I can still pull off live without so much overdubbing and, you know, playing percussion on top of the drum track so that was a challenge yes so yeah uh i love that track it's it's really 
really nice uh one of my my favorites of the album and uh and it really like i say i, I love sepultura especially the early like beneath the remains and arise yeah. and uh, roots those those kind of albums they really of course in the roots they really made a uh, their Brazilian uh, roots stand out in the percussion part uh, department. So, yeah. So I, I was highly inspired. You know, finally I can I I can play as a percussionist, but I I can play the be the drummer in the band. Yeah, you, you have dual role on that track. Sorry, you have uh, two roles, two jobs on that on that same track. Yeah, yes, you, yes, that's correct, and I can still do the same uh, two roles at the same time. So that was uh, that was cool. There, cool. There was a little bit of that tribal sound in the opening track in music as well as that song starts. Do, do you do you feel like that that opening track of the album kind of gives the listener a little bit of a glimpse of everything else you're going to get throughout the record, both musically and vocally? Yeah, music is a good example because uh, when Thomas said. Uh, we need you uh, to do this uh, intro with Troy. And uh, Troy said that you have to make it bigger than uh, Hans Zimmer. <laughs> so, so I thought, okay, I'm, I'm going to make, uh, make this. Um, so I think I recorded like 50 tracks of percussion in the studio in three hours. Uh, I played all kind of Czech race and uh, all kind of wooden uh, in instruments and, and uh, some djembes and stuff like that. So, so yeah, it it, it is a it is a kind of like the uh, the intro for the album to come, so to speak. Yeah, yeah I, f I felt that way listening to it. It had a little bit of that rolling of the red carpet, uh, allowing the listener to get small pieces of what you're going to get in bigger doses <laughs> down uh, as you go down the line with the record. So it, it's not going to be as much of a shock to the. It's almost a vaccine. You know, you get the virus inserted in you, but in a small dose, enough for you to build the antibodies. So I kind of felt that the record had that ability to kind of prepare you for all, all the creativity that was going to come down the line. And there's a lot of creativity on the record. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I, I, I totally feel like that. It's, it's, it's a good way to explain it. But uh, it's like in every, every, every album that the listener will, in the end, you know, make their own decisions what the music is all about or how should they, you know, approach it uh, like really lyric wise and, and playing wise. So so that's why music is, is interesting because everybody can make their own interpret interpretations. So, yeah. Yeah, that, I, that's a good, good, good way to put it. So yeah, I, I always uh, it puzzles me when people are, are so rigid with their views as far as music is concerned. Like, it, you know, I I'm listening to you talk about the album, and it, it's a great insight on how the album was created and how things were made. But that doesn't change how the album feels to me because that that was a personal experience that I had when I listened to the record. The same way it was a personal experience to you when you created the record. I, I think it's important for us to understand that. Um, the mu music is art, so we all gonna feel that art in our own different way, depending what kind of emotional baggage we bring in to that experience. Yeah, and also it, it's a different to to make a record, and uh, also for me the the songs kind of grew in in me as well. I started to love the album more and more when the production went on, and I started to hear the vocals more, and you know. All the all the choirs and and it's the same happened with the endless forms. So when I was playing my drums, I, I heard maybe some rhythm guitar and and bass and keyboards. And I, of course, we had floor there already in rehearsals to sing. But it's a different when you when you really hear the end result. And it, the same happened with the self title, with uh, actually Winter Sun, because we never rehearsed with Yari not single day so Yari came to my hometown one day before the studio and we traveled together he only sent me the demos so I was practicing along with the demos and then we went to the studio so I was playing the drums on the album with maybe just with the rhythm guitars and then when the final album came out I was like okay this is actually not bad <laughs> <laughs> 
Oops. <laughs> yeah, this is okay. I, you, you can put my name on the CD. It's fine. Uh, yeah, you can put my name <laughs> on the CD. So thank you very much. <laughs> uh, was, was there a song on this record that gave you a, a, a real hard time to, to, to get it nailed down the way? Because I have a feeling you're a perfectionist. And I don't think you would you would let something slide unless you feel like it's 100% the way you want it to be. So was there a song on this album that gave you a little bit of a hard time? Uh, Pan actually gave me a little bit. Uh, really? Challenge. You know, yeah, you know, there, there was certain parts. What I, because you, you know, maybe you don't, you don't hear it on the album, but the way I play it, there's some weird fucking stickings that uh, <laughs> maybe I, I make like I make this kind of uh, playing play through thing that I can show some of the stuff that's actually happening. So it might sound a bit, you know, more simple, but it actually is not. So there's some some stuff that really gave me a hard time. Wow. That, that's yeah. really interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah. You know, I, I went to see Nightwish live when you guys tour in North America. Last time you were in North America during the Decades tour. Yes, yeah. and, and and the 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 memory one of the memories that I'll carry with me uh, forever is you playing drums and you you look so relaxed, so calm, uh, just like like it's so smooth. It, it, it was it was like not only you were born to do it, but it, it felt to me that it was like the the skill required to do it was so below your capabilities that you were just like swimming through it like you were like a fish in water you know what i mean like just like uh, how 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 you do that like how, how can you be so composed when when you're playing live like it just feels like like the drums are an extension of who you are as a person uh of course i've been playing since i was six years old and i'm a, i'm 40 46 now so so drums have been part of my life almost all my life so so I love what it, what I do, and also uh, I'm totally different animal than than Yuka, because Yuka is a showman, and uh, I have a lot to learn from Yuka actually as a uh, in in the show business. Uh, but like I've always played uh, the kind of music that I never really had a chance to twirl the stick, you know. <laughs> so, so many, when you play the blast beat, you don't have to, ah, you know, do that. So, 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 uh, play with night, which is, it's a different, different, uh, challenge. Uh, and I, and I love it because I, I love ACDC. I, I love, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, straight, uh, eight note stuff that, uh, we, we also have with Nightwish. So playing simple is not mean that it's boring or, it's easy. It's actually totally the opposite. So I enjoy that a lot. So, but also, I try to rehearse as much as I possible can because I still play drums. Uh, I just finished my my student two hours ago. In here, uh, I had, uh, I think I gave eighteen lessons in two days to a few guys. So I I was staying most of uh, my time in the rehearsal space. So I love drums, I love drumming, I love music, but I still play every day by myself, you know, try to keep, keep you know, get better and get to the next level. So I can level, prob wow. prob probably, hopefully, and uh, that's my, my goal to also to inspire my bandmates, because my bandmates also inspire me every day. So I try to give something back and I try get the smile from their faces when they look at me like okay you're doing a good job <laughs> so, so that's uh, that's that's my goal in in music actually so, so for the next tour are you practicing the 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 stick throwing the stick up in the air and then the twirling with the finger are, are, have you been practicing that yes actually uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, I try to include uh, a little bit more of that showman <laughs> attitude in in some of the parts but let's see how it goes uh, like I said, I've never done it. I started to do it uh, for fun on the tour, but sometimes, you know, I, I threw a stick and it almost <laughs> fell down in Floor's head. So that, 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 that was maybe not always so successful. So, so uh, yeah, that's, that's, that, 
That's really good. That's really good. Uh, the other the other moment uh, when I think of Kai, besides of the drumming, uh, the, the moment that I was introduced with uh, to you as a drummer, as a musician, was through Winter Sun, watching the the Sons of Winter and Stars, all the, those those uh, videos from Sonic Pump Studios. That's oh, yes. how I was introduced to the band, and that's how I was introduced to you. And I'll never forget uh, the first video that we did, which was Sons of Winter and Stars, and you're wiping the sweat off of your face with a cloth in the video. And uh, I remember saying something to my son along the lines, like, wow, you you know they're putting him to work because look at the sweat. Like, he's just like, the song is not even finished. At that point, I think it was just at the midway point. Uh, and there was a break and, and you're just like wiping the sweat. Um, it, it, it was the, how do you look back on those days of uh, uh, of playing with Winter Sun, recording those videos? Actually, Sons of, uh, Sons of Winter Stars in that session was... Uh, doing it was the last song we did, so we didn't de- do it in the order of the of the of the songs as it did on the album. So so that was the last song. So I've o- already played three songs in before that. Mm-hmm. So that that was the maybe the sweat was all about. <laughs> so it it wasn't the first song I was doing, and uh, it was just one take we did. There was no. Uh, chance for many mistakes because we only play the songs once and uh, and that's it so it like i said it was a live rehearsal and we also took the the gambling so to speak that it can go to shit or it can go it can be good so i always like to gamble in a way that like like when you play live you should be able to do it for real like in the studio you could you can do all this kind of uh things uh to kind of cover your uh weaknesses but when you play live there's no chance to do that so i always feel like when i when i play in a studio i just still want to play as a as a live version so of course playing with winterson and of course I, i've never left the band of course there's been you Heike has been replacing me so we're just waiting for the next opportunity to do something together, but uh, I'm not out of the band. So I still, of course, most of my time go with Nightwish, but I'm, I'm still not done with Winter Sun. So it's, it's people maybe have misunderstood a bit that. Yeah, just, I, th- I, think, I think there's yeah. some confusion uh, from fans. They, 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 they feel like you've left, but uh, I've talked to Yari about it. When Yari was here in, in 2018 with Winter Sun touring, um, he said to me that, you know, if I was in his shoes, uh, there's no way I can turn down an opportunity to play with Nightwish. I mean, uh, you, you you can't let one thing get in the way of the other. That that was his answer to me. Yeah, but also the, the time when it happened, 2014, when I was asked to join to replace Yuka, the time was a little bit different, so there was nothing actually happening. We already finished the Time One tour, so we were waiting for the next uh, next step, so to speak, from from Yari. So, so of course, when uh, when uh, Forest Seasons came out, we were already had the plans for everything with Nightwish. So every, everything <laughs> went like that. So, oh, my dogs are yelling. Sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to be on camera. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> behind the camera at the moment. Yeah, but anyway, now you know I have I have dogs. So, <laughs> so. Yeah. I actually before we start recording, you you showed me the dogs. You have two beautiful dogs. Yeah, I, I just wanted to all the other people to know that we have dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I think that there there's some misconceptions out there, and and maybe now with you saying that will put those those to rest. And and do you, do you? Uh, do, are you looking forward to another record with Winter Sun? Because it's it's coming. Uh, I you know I I don't want to make any any time kind of jokes because that's like a running joke. But uh, we, we know it's coming. We know Yari's working on it. So uh, are are you looking forward to a change? Because that will give you a change as far as the sound and feel is concerned. Going from Nightwish back and creating another Winter Sun record. Uh, I actually have done it already. I I done in my drums for Time Two already back in two thousand six. So, it's <laughs> just wait for the release. 
it's it's 14 years ago and and uh, I already done my part so I'm just wa- I'm just waiting uh, for it to come out as well so uh, like time was never supposed to be time one or time two it was supposed to be album called time mm-hmm. but then the record label cho- chose to split it so we can at least at least have something out so the the whole album but 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 the drums are already since 2006 so uh, i recorded the whole whole time material in, in in the studio back in may 2006 so it's 14 years ago so let's uh, hope for the best <laughs> <laughs> it will someday come out as well so the no, second but point. i mean I, I i wouldn't be surprised i i i told this to Yari, you know if if i was in his shoes i would release a different album with a different name before releasing time two just to piss off everybody and then release time two afterwards so you could you could release almost do like star wars release time before time which is the prequel and then release time to get back to business or something like that and so, so it's like almost time <laughs> <laughs> i love that <laughs> almost time yeah it's almost time i love that that's perfect if he's looking for a title you just give him a title almost time almost time <laughs> and, and, you, and you mentioned your students uh, and how many lessons you 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 give uh in your house in your opinion what may, what does it make uh, somebody to be a great drummer? What what does it take for one to be a great drummer? Uh, of course, it depends uh, the style you wanna you, you wanna play. In, in jazz, there's uh, certain things you need to achieve and and practice before you can actually be able to improvise and and play in that uh, language. Because I always compare drumming in a language so if you play latin music you need to have certain words down before you can actually speak in that language in metal music you should of course most of the people know that uh, we kind of need a double bass as one part of the repertoire to be able to play certain stuff uh, in the metal genre but also in jazz you have to have a little bit different coordination to be able to play that style so uh, but but of, of course because drums are a rhythmic instrument we play rhythm so we should be able to play everything but it's not that black and white so to be a great drummer uh, it, it's it's a really uh, it, it's a big question actually but of course you're supposed to uh, play a good time it's also like maybe the one of the good qualities of a good drummer keep the beat you know because everybody else is re- relying on the drums you kind of the, the band sits on your lap in a way that you produce them a good uh, starting point to to play the guitar and keys and you know sing on top of that so and play the bass so but you know playing rhythmically well that's a big challenge so maybe that's the the biggest biggest. Uh, you don't have to be the most coordinated player, but if you can play a good beat, you can all already play music with people. So so mm. maybe that's the one of the good qualities of being a drummer. Keep uh, good time and and uh, keep a good feel and you know hit the drums in a consistent way. So so every hit is not. Uh, played in a in a different sound so so being consistent it's also uh, it's a lot of work I, I was going to say to you that my wife always says that I can't multitask I don't know if your wife tells you that but she says that I can't multitask and when I look at a drummer you guys are the perfect uh, the, the the personified image of somebody who can multitask because you're using your arms you're using your legs everything at the same time I have a hard time uh tapping my hand and my foot in any sort of coordination at the same time the, do drummers have their brain wired differently like uh, h- how do you get in, into that mode where you can control different different uh portions of your body in a different way to me sounds so complicated feels so complicated yeah if you think about like um like a human computer uh, as drummers go you have to talk to Mike Mangini from Dream Theater. He's the perfect example of a guy who can play 
with any feet and hand together and play different time signatures. So I think drums in general, they mostly been kind of misunderstood because we only have one brain. We don't have four brains for one for each limb. So because we have four limbs. <laughs> so uh, the way I teach, I can also maybe I got get a if you ever come to Finland or if I ever ever see you in Toronto, maybe we should have a small drum lesson together. So I, <laughs> I, I can prove you wrong. So you can actually do it as well. You Listen, just, if you prove, if, if you, you prove you, me wrong, I, I will, I will prove you, prove you wrong in five minutes. Oh, I, I, I promise you, I will prove you wrong in five minutes. I think you'll quit drumming after after you're finished with me. You'll quit drumming because you'll see oh, that I'm useless. I'm useless. Oh, no, no, you're not. I, I, I can't do it. You're not. You're not. I will. I will fix it. I will fix it. I, I've gone to a drum store here where you have those electronic ones where you put the headphones on. So yeah. when you're drumming, only you can hear what you're doing. For me to to hit something with this, my foot doesn't move. For my foot to move, my arms don't move. Like I, I'm, I, I, it, when I when I see somebody drumming, it looks so smooth, so easy. And then when I go there, I'm 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 a complete idiot. Like I can't. I have like no control of 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 my. Of my limbs, it's just I don't know. That, that's a, that's a tall task you're proposing. But like I said, you gave me a challenge, and next time I, we come to Toronto, <laughs> we have to make a drum lesson together. So I'll prove you, I'll prove you wrong. <laughs> All right, I'm looking forward to that. I'm I, really, I'm really looking forward to that. And and, and when when students approach you, do you uh, take in consideration what style of drumming they're looking for as far as the music that they want to play? How, how do you approach? the students when they come to you and they ask you for for a lesson what what do you want to know from them in order for you to give them exactly what they need of course people have you know some people want to only play rock and roll and some people just want to play jazz and i've had so many students throughout my years because i started teaching back in 1996 so it's it's a long way and uh, i also have grown as a teacher uh, during those years to be able to be be as efficient and fast and you know right to the point so of course i i always ask the people what do they want and what are their wishes for the lessons but but usually i just put them behind the kit and they play for me maybe a few minutes and i immediately see what we need to work with to be able to put them on the next level so I have two kids next to each other. So I play my own kit and he, the student has other kit and we are next to each other. So I can also give examples with my own playing. So they also see it's like when, when you learn to walk in the, in the first place, you just walk, watch your parents, what they were doing. So you thought that maybe using your knees to walk is not the best way to do it. So <laughs> you, you, you try to stand up. They, your parents didn't tell you what to do. They didn't tell you how to walk. It's part of the evolution. You know, when you stand up and you start using your legs in your, instead of your four limbs. So that's what I try to also do. So I try to give a, a good example of what to do behind the drums. So they can try to mimic, you know, my playing and give the like visual image, but they also hear what I'm doing. So they can connect the, the eyes and the ear and the body, how it feels to play that same stuff like together. So, mm -hmm. so that's the three most different, I mean, the, the most uh, important parts, uh, the, the senses, you know, seeing, hearing and feeling. That's how the drumming is made. So if it tastes weird, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I, I agree with you. <laughs> or, or if it smells weird. <laughs> hey, I, I have to ask you this, because you, you're, you're such a great drummer, really, like, everybody respects you, the, the body of work that you've put forward. When, when a student comes to you asking you for a lesson, I, I'm speaking from, from the hardships that I have teaching my son his homework. And the fights that we have with each other when I have to teach him his homework. When you look at a student 
and, and he's not at the level that perhaps the student thinks that he is. Do you, do you ever think to yourself like, wow, man, today I really have my work cut out for me? Or, 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 or do you have uh, the necessary calm to be almost like a father figure at that point and perhaps be a better, a better father than me when, when I'm teaching my kid and, and, and ease, ease that student in and in, in to help them get to where they want to go? Do you, do you have a hard time with that? Yes, I think that the 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 last one who said that I, I try to be the 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 calm father because that's my that's my responsibility as a teacher. You know, when some of those people they they think they are better drummers or better musicians in their head, but they can't get it out. So so my uh, kind of work is I, I can try to get them to understand what's happening in the brain and also what's happening in the hands and the feet so they can connect better you know their thoughts and what they're actually doing so yeah that's that's my responsibility to be a good teacher to go to the level of the of the student and you know because whatever the level is so that's my responsibility yeah, you're you're a better man than me. I, I have a hard time going down to the level of my son when it comes to help him with his math. Uh, when when I uh, I'll try that as well. So I I totally uh, understand you because I think I'm a better man playing the drums than I'm I'm a better man trying to help my kids to learn the math. So <laughs> <laughs> certain things in life are just are just difficult. Uh, I have one more question for you, and that is we're talking about drumming. We're talking about what kind of a, an icon you, you are in terms of, of drums, and people look up to you as a role model to what they want to become as a drummer. Who, who did you look up to when you started to play the drums? Who were your idols? Of course, my first two idols were uh, Clyde Burr and Nico McBrain from Iron Maiden. So those are the, my two all-time heroes. Because because of those guys, when I heard Killers, when I was eight years old, uh, of course Clyde Burr was still playing on Number of the Beast, and uh, then came Nico McBrain in uh, Peace of Mind. So those two guys, of course, there's a bunch of other guys, but those two are the earliest ones. Why I started to listen to heavy metal and appreciate that kind of uh, style and that kind of Drumming really made me, uh, you know, break the sweat and try to play along with those early Maiden records. And uh, they're still my heroes. And uh, I just need to thank them for the music. So because be without them, I would probably listen to something else. You never know. But of course, there was there's also along the the way when the when I was growing older, like in the early nineties, I was heavily in, involved in the death metal scene, like Morbid Angel, like Pete Sandoval, and the death, when especially uh, Sean Reinhardt was playing the drums in the Human album, and also Gene Hogan when the Symbolic came out. So there's a lot, lot of inspiration that came from, from the early days of my career that I have to pay the tribute to those guys. Uh, but but the early two early ones was of course and of course peter chris from kiss so so kiss was also one of them <laughs> long list it's a long list it's a long list yeah it's a long list well kai thank you very much for your time today it was an absolute pleasure an honor a delight to talk to you about drumming and nightwish and winter sun and everything uh, I, I really want to thank you for your time today thank you pedro and uh Cheers to your son and uh, have a nice Mother's Day over there in Canada. So I will, I will. And, and let's not forget, we, we have that challenge. So the next time I see you, either be in Finland or in Toronto, I, I'm going to take you up on that challenge and uh, let the best men win, which I think it will probably be you. <laughs> no, no, I, I, will, I will make you play the drums. Uh, I promise. <laughs> so thank you very much. And uh, cheers, guys, too. And... and uh, Stay well. You too. Stay, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.